Hello, everybody. Um, I'm aware this isn't the best lighting. I can't really <laughs> control it too much. Um, and I'm still waiting on getting a camcorder, which hasn't happened yet. So if the camera tries to autofocus, I'm really sorry. Um, and hopefully I can get a camcorder soon. But what I wanted to talk about today was how to properly care for betta fish. Um, I have a lot of high school, college age friends, and in college you're allowed to have fish as pets, and a lot of people don't really understand the responsibility. Um, a lot of people get a betta and put it in a little vase and don't really know what to do other than feed it and their fish don't live very long. If taken care of correctly, betas can live for like three to five years. So I just wanted to make this video to hopefully influence some people out of the decision of getting a fish if they really can't care for it properly. First of all, many people think that betas are an inexpensive pet. And I'm going to be completely honest with you, I knew nothing about betta fish before I bought my fish. I saw a little like $10 tank, you've all seen them I'm sure, you go to any pet store and along with the betas, they have these little teeny tiny tanks and they look so cute. And it's like, oh, that'd be great to put on my desk. This shape tank right here is what I originally had my fish in. Don't mind that it's dirty. It was... It smells bad. <laughs> it was used as a quarantine tank for my sick fish. But I bought a tank like this, and it had a divider in it. And this is a one-gallon tank. This is not okay <laughs> to keep a beta in. Some recommended size for one beta fish is two and a half gallons. Walmart actually has some really cute two and a half gallon tanks um, that are great for one beta, not two, one. And they're pretty inexpensive and they have everything you need to really start taking care of betas. So that's the first thing. Do not buy a little vase or a little tiny cute little tank for your beta. Betas need room. You have to think of it as if like what if you were confined to living in your closet? instead of your entire house or the rest of the world. Like, not trying to sound like an animal rights activist here, but you really have to give an animal space if you want it to thrive. If you just have a beta in a vase or something on a desk, that's all it's going to be is an ornament. It's not going to be an actual pet that you can interact with. Betas actually have like really interesting personalities if you give them space to thrive and you know do what they want to do. Secondly, having a beta is just like having any other pet. You have to take care of it. That means you have to feed it, you have to do water changes, you have to treat it if it gets sick. It is not just a disposable pet that's like, oh it's dead, now I can get another one. The thing that people don't realize most is about water changes. And a lot of people think if you have a filter in your tank that you don't have to change the water. And that's not true. Betas don't need a filter. If you do water changes correctly and consistently, they don't need a filter. Um, most beta tanks, two and a half gallons or over, can deal with a 50% water change once a week. That is 20-30 minutes out of your entire week to care for these fish so they can actually thrive. It's not that hard. And it just really upsets me that people keep their fish in these tiny little confined spaces and then wonder why they die so quickly. If your fish ends up getting sick, I know a lot of people would just put that to the wayside and let their fish die. But if you actually become involved in keeping betas, you have to be aware of the fact that it can be quite expensive to try and save a fish. Um, I started off with two fish. One of them died randomly. He showed no signs of being sick. But the other one started getting sick in about October of last year, 2011. He started getting bloated, lethargic. 
I spent a lot of money trying to save this fish. I bought a new heater so I could put him in a quarantine tank by himself with his own heater. So I bought a heater for the main tank. I had to buy aquarium test strips, which um, I'll show you what all this stuff looks like. I had to buy these test strips to test the water to rule out any kind of chemical problem because that's another thing with betas you can't just use any water you have to get a water dechlorinator to strip the water of any kind of chlorine or chloramines or anything like that that's very important and a lot of people probably don't know that either but I ended up buying my fish both of these medications Marison and Marison 2 this one was about eight dollars for an eight pack and this was like twenty dollars for a twenty four pack and I also ended up buying Marison Plus and this was like seven or eight dollars all of this to try to save my fish and he ended up dying in March so he lived quite a long time but it's expensive if you're really going to take care of your fish the correct way. Overall, betas are really relatively inexpensive, easy pets to have if you do your research first. You're going to have to buy a tank at least two and a half gallons. You're going to have to buy a gravel vacuum if you don't want to do 100% water changes where you have to get the fish out and put them in a cup. You have to buy fish food, water dechlorinator, um, you have to have some kind of plants for your betas to hide in and swim around in. Um, if your fish gets sick, you're going to have to purchase medicine. A lot of it is a one-time expense, and once you buy that stuff, you're not really going to have to buy anything else. I've put a ton of money into my fish tank because I started off small and then realized, oh, that's not good enough, and upgraded, and realized, oh, that's not good enough, and upgraded. And if you do your research from the beginning, it's not expensive, and it's not that time-consuming. You just feed your fish every day, and you change their water. It's not that hard. So I'm not trying to discourage anyone from getting a beta. They're actually really interesting, and a lot of people make fun of me because I'm so involved with my fish, but they're actually really engaging and interesting creatures if taken care of correctly. I just made this video because I've seen people, lots of people, get betas and not understand how to take care of them and they end up dying and I just hope I can get the message across how to actually take care of these fish and I've spent a lot of time researching it because after I started with betas, I just got hooked and then I became like obsessed with them. So I hope that if you're considering getting a beta, I either helped you realize it's not for you or helped you be more informed and understand better everything that comes along with owning a beta fish. And now I will show you my two betas. This is Buckethead. He's a bright orange veil tail beta. And, well, if you come up here, that back there is Sweet Coon. He has a multicolored crown tail. And this is the tank I keep them in. It's a divided 10 gallon tank so they each have 5 gallons to themselves. And as you can see, there's no filter, just a heater. Oh, I forgot to mention that. If you have a beta, heaters are crucial. Betas are tropical fish and they need a temperature of anywhere between like 76 to like 83 degrees. And that's very important. So you also have to have a thermometer. They're very cheap and inexpensive. And I just have a um, airstone just to keep the water circulating. But I hope I was able to help you by making this video and if you have any questions just comment down below.